I can't even fathom how many pounds of rice and rice flour and sugar have gone through these doors, but probably a lot more than we could even imagine. The year was 1903. Teddy Roosevelt was president. The Wright brothers were about to launch their first flight, and this mochi shop opened in Little Tokyo, Los Angeles. Grandparents just love being grandkids here, and uh, it's been over three, four, five generations. Coming here, having them get their sweets, it's a very memorable and very spiritual place for many people. Brian Kido's the third generation of his family to own the Fugetsudo Sweet Shop, a beloved store in the community for the last 120 years. There's nothing shiny or new here. In fact, Brian says it's the simple sound of the old wooden case packed with colorful sweets that keeps customers coming back. And you remember peeking over this one level here, and uh, it measures how old they were when they get to here. The little pastries made with sweet rice are mixed, pounded, rolled, stuffed, and decorated all on site. Mochi in general uh, comes in two forms. One is a, a plain white mochi that's like dumpling. And we use it for ceremonial things like New Year's Day. The other mochi is a sweet mochi and it's soft and it's sweet. And most of the time it's, um, it has a sweet bean paste filling, either red bean or white bean. The Kito family's history with sweets began with this man. Grandpa was Sei Ichi Kito. He trained in a company called Fugetsuto. But Fugetsuto is kind of synonymous with this type of business, so there are many stores with that same name. Fu, Fugetsuto, Fu means the wind, Getsu means the moon. So it's wind and moon. The mochi shop became a staple of a thriving Japanese community in Los Angeles for more than 35 years until World War II. The family was evacuated to Heart Mountain, Wyoming, and incarcerated in the camps there and they were there for four years. Grandpa uh, actually made pastries in camp. Um, it was kind of comfort food. The Kido family was one of more than 125,000 Japanese Americans detained during the war. Brian's parents, Roy and Kazuko, met and married at Heart Mountain. They came back with Grandpa and they stayed in the local church because they had no money. And it took them about almost a year to restart the store. Roy Kido reopened the business in 1946. And Brian's earliest memories were made here in the store. They would just put a blanket down there and put me to sleep up there like when I was about four or five years old. It's always been family and friends, he says, that helped the store survive and prosper. During the rush season, during the holidays, everyone's here. Uh, mom, dad, auntie, uncles, cousins, uh, friend, family friends. Uh, we're working around the clock uh, between Christmas and New Year's. While I was going to school, I would come after school and work here until I was done. And it was it was quite grueling because I worked six days a week and uh, you wouldn't go home until the job was done. Ryan took over in 1980 and promised his dad he would run the store until its 100th anniversary. I get 20 pieces. Weathering tough storms like the Los Angeles riots, increasing crime, and the pandemic. I always compared the challenges that I had against me to what my grandfather and my father experienced. Brian says he's thought of modernizing, but his many customers say the little vintage shop is just the right place for their sweet tooth. I don't think uh, grandpa or my father would have ever dreamt that this store was going to celebrate 120 years. I'm pretty amazed myself that I'm still here. Wow. An amazing family and an amazing institution. There are, there are less than a handful of mochi shops like that in the U.S. All of them are out on the West Coast. And in addition to the traditional mochi, Brian created these modern flavors like uh, chocolate and peanut butter oh. to keep up with the changing taste. It is the coolest, and uh, we all got to go there in L.A. I know, so. that would be I fun. I smell a buddy up. Yeah, let's go. Along.